In our top story, the United Nations Security Council has agreed to extend an aid operation in Syria through a border crossing with Turkey for another 12 months. Today we are witnessing a historical moment. For the first time, Russia and the United States not only managed to find an agreement, but to present a joint text which was supported by all our colleagues in the Council. We expect that this kind of day will become a turning point, that not only Syria will win from this, but the whole Middle Eastern region and the world as a whole. Resolution was passed following last-minute uh, negotiations between the Russian UN ambassador Nasali Nebenzia and his U.S. counterpart Linda Thomas-Greenfield. Turkey welcomed the extension. Russia had previously rejected an extension of aid operations through the Bab al-Hawa border crossing, arguing that the move will benefit terrorists in Syria's Idlib province and violate the country's sovereignty. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called for additional funding and more border crossings for aid deliveries into Syria. Joining us out of uh, Rochester is uh, Judith Bello, member of Syria Solidarity Movement. Hello, Judith. Always a pleasure to have you on Press TV. Hope you're safe and doing well. Your, your thought, I mean, basically aid getting into the Syrians has been a quagmire for quite some time. Your thoughts on it? Uh, well, this is a, a really serious problem with uh, the United Nations decision and with American pressure on the uh, Security Council. There are a number of really excellent reasons why uh, this aid should not be going through the uh, Bab al crossing. What, the first is that uh, it's being received by uh, Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, which is a version of al-Qaeda located in Syria. And the aid is effectively supporting the partition of Syria. It's also su supporting the Turkish occupation of an adjunct area of Syria. So when they complain about uh, the refugees, what Turkey is basically doing is they're occupying a part of Syria, they're Turkifying it, and uh, forcing the people to uh, do business in Turkish, and at the same time, they are collecting aid from the West to enforce this. The aid violates the United Nations Charter specifically in this way, because the Charter says all member countries shall refrain from threatening the territorial integrity of another member state. And Syria is a member of the United Nations. Even more shameful is the fact that Gutierrez called for more crossings from Turkey into Syria. Meanwhile, the, Tur the Syrian people themselves did nothing. They uh, are under severe sanctions with the Caesar sanctions. I was really disappointed that the Chinese and the Russians didn't hold their ground in opposing this resolution. But I hear there was some serious backroom negotiations with the United States and that they were threatened. I know they threatened uh, uh, Russia with a further uh, break in dialogue and a further uh, diplomatic break. So uh, this might have seemed to Russia more important to keep their uh, diplomatic connection so they can at least talk to the United States instead of having to sort of defend themselves blindly. Uh, but it's really a criminal thing for this. This resolution is a criminal thing for the United Nations to have done. It also um, distracts, well, as I said, it distracts from the fact that other people in Syria aren't getting aid and that they are instead being... Um, strangled by severe sanctions. Meanwhile, it's discriminatory and it divides the country. It causes uh, conflict between the country uh, over the fact that people in that region are getting a wealth of supplies and nothing is going into the rest of Syria. A lot of money is going into that region of Idlib, and yet the people are still suffering and one wonders what happens when Al-Qaeda actually gets that money in their hands or those goods in their hands. Who eats first? You know, who gets the medical aid they need and who doesn't? When you're talking about Al-Qaeda, this has consistently been an issue. It was an issue in Aleppo that uh, the, um, the terrorists received the money and the medical aid and the food, and the people uh, were not permitted to partake of it. So there's a lot of issues here, 
and the West is papering over them because they want to maintain the division in Syria, they want to maintain an occupation of Syria, they want to divide the country. And this uh, humanitarian so-called aid is actually, uh, you know, a Trojan horse to uh, bring in further, uh, to continue the war, to bring in further division into the country. Right, and so Judith, there's all, there's no so there's no question in your mind that most of this aid is getting basically intercepted and hoarded by terrorist factions there on Syrian soil. I believe that uh, it is. I, I can't guarantee it, but I think that's a real issue. And I think it's uh, something that they, I, I read in the United Nations website, they said there were 35 uh, million, uh, 3.5 million people in Idlib. However, the statistics, it's far more likely to see that there are around 1 million people in Israel. So, again, it's like the money that goes to the white helmets. Like, what are, uh, what could, you know, $500 million do for the people of uh, Syria? And why hasn't it happened? Instead, you have fancy, uh, fancy Hollywood style movies and, you know, uh, all kinds of perks for the people who actually receive the aid, but the people that need the aid, they don't see it. Thank you. Always a pleasure to have you on from Rochester. That's Judith Bello, member of Syria Solidarity Movement.